Hello everyone and welcome to the fraud detection use case demo using Open Data Hub and OpenShift Container Platform. In this use case, we wanted to build an end-to-end -end AI ML platform that can detect fraud from credit card transactions. We downloaded the data from Kaggle and this data set included time, amount, and 28 hidden features to protect consumer data. We created an AI ML model that can predict fraud detections. We served it and we collected model metrics out of that model. And then we provided model monitoring tools so we can see the different metrics using um, monitoring tools for data, for data, for DevOps. We also provided development tools for data engineers and data scientists. In this high level architecture, we can see from the left side that we have the data scientists using JupyterHub as their development environments. This is where they do the, their first research on model development and they try to figure out what's the best model, what, how to train it and how to test it. In that Jupyter Hub, we can see that each user can get their own Spark cluster with their own Spark master and workers. After the data scientist creates the model, tests it, and finally decide on what the model should look like with parameters and what kind of model it is, then they fully train the model and, so, and save it in the Ceph object store. Once the model is, the final model is stored in the Ceph object store, that's when we serve it using Seldon. Seldon provides many metrics that is displayed from Prometheus and Grafana as dashboards for DevOps to monitor. So we can see here at a high level architecture, our credit card transaction data is stored in Ceph. Data explanation and model development was performed in Jupyter. Uh, we used the random forest classifier model to save the model. The Seldon model extracts model .pickle from Rook Ceph and serves the model. To simulate the credit card transactions, we used Kafka. We had a Kafka consumer and a Kafka producer that was able to generate data, read data out of the Ceph and generate it and use the prediction coming out of the model for every one second to five seconds. Next, we will show a couple of Grafana boards that we created to show monitoring, monitoring first from the Seldon model. We can see here the red spikes are all the fraud detections. And then another example would be the Seldon core metrics that, that we will show in the demo in, in the coming couple minutes. And then the next one we can show also is the Kafka uh, Grafana dash model that has Kafka data. And now since we saw example uh, Grafana dashboards, let's move on to the main OpenShift dashboard where we see all the pods. So this is our main OpenShift uh, console. You can see the Kafka pods. Um, well, th these are all the different Kafka pods that we have. Uh, you can also see going down further, you can start seeing uh, the Grafana pods, Jupyter Hub. And we can see here there's two Jupyter notebooks, one for each user. We have two users currently using it. And then we can see the Kafka producer consumer and the model, Seldom model pod that's serving the model. We can also see the Prometheus pods, the Open Data Hub operator, the Seldom core, the Seldom core API, and the cluster manager pods. Um, I also want to show you that there are Spark cluster master workers for each user. As I mentioned before, we have two users and we'll see both of them here. So these are mostly the pods that we have running in our uh, namespace in OpenShift. So now let's move on to one of our notebooks that our data scientists worked on. So first, um, we, what we're going to do is to try to install some needed PySpark libraries, then we are going to try to upload the credit card data, a sample of it only, to our Ceph storage. So we ran that one and you can see that the HTTP status code is 200 and that our data set was saved under the key uploaded credit card.csv and in the bucket that's called open. So after we have the data in Ceph, what we are going to do is we're going to use Spark to read that data and put in a data frame. So as you can see here that to get a Spark session, what we do is we can use the internal environment variable Spark cluster to get a link to our own private Spark cluster that's running for us. So we create a data frame from Spark and we use that data frame later on to do model creation on it or whatever we need. So let's run this. Uh, we'll see that uh, what we're trying to do here is trying to get a Spark session. Again, this is the Spark session is to our Spark cluster that's specific to the user that has logged in to this Jupyter Hub. And after we get the Spark session, what we're going to do is try to read the Spark data from uh, the Ceph S3 interface, and we place it into a data frame. 
and that data frame will be later used for data manipulation or wrangling or creating any model. So we can see here that the total number of credit card transactions are only 10,000, like I mentioned, and only 38 are fraud. And it's a skewed data set, which is okay for this example. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, the random forest uh, classifier, and we're going to take only 75% of the, of the credit card transactions for training. And we're going to drop time uh, and class from the features and keep class for the feature, actually, the feature uh, vector. So what we do is we create the random forest classifier and then we do the model fit and we run the code. And we can see at this point we have around 28 features and the number of training transactions is 7,500 while the number of test transactions is only 2,500. All right, so next what we do is just kind of another uh, method of just doing some ex um, exploring what the model is doing. We can draw confusion matrices. And what confusion, ma confusion matrices show is the prediction result versus the actual result. And this is just a way to show us well, how many number of um, credit card transactions were correctly predicted and how many were not correctly predicted. So we go ahead and we plot the predicted X label and the Y label true and we run that again and we can just see and just explore these uh, graphs. So again this is just to show the capability that you can do this on the data frame and try to analyze your model. So now that we have too many features, we figured out we have too many features in the model, what we want to do is try to eliminate, only include the important features. And the next thing we're going to do is plot the important features. And we can see from the graph that the important features are the top seven that we see here, and then it tapers off uh, to the less important features. So we take the top seven features and we recreate the model, retrain the model. So we drop all the features we don't need, and then we create a random forest classifier, again, with the same parameters, or maybe some adjusted parameters, and we do the model training. After we're done, we basically create the model.pickle file. This model file is going to be used to be uploaded to Ceph again. So let's run this again using the new important features and create the model again. And after that, we will save that model and test it a little and then save it. So you can see that the number of features now are eight. That's seven plus one for that amount. And then the file is called model.pickle. We can do the confusion matrix again. We're going to skip it for this one. But what we're going to do something interesting here is test the new model. And the way we test it is first, we either send fraud or not fraud, and we see what the prediction that's come out, coming out. So we're going to do fraud, not fraud first, and we see that it's returning prediction of zero, meaning it's not fraud. We're going to test it again and give it just fraud and see that it should return one from this test. So let's see that. <coughs> So here we go, we're just changing um, the data frame. We kind of created two data frames, one fraud and one not fraud, and we filtered based on the value of the, of the class. So fraud, we're sending a fraud now, it should be sending us back one for prediction. So we're happy with this model for now. Of course, in, real, or in the real world, we have to do more testing with the model and evaluate the model better. But for this little, uh, t little demo, we are just gonna upload the resultant model.pickle into Ceph again, into the bucket called model, and in the key called upload slash model. So we have the model ready, and now we get back an HTTP code 200 and where it's loaded and what bucket it's being loaded in. So now what we want to do is we want to serve that model. So we log into our OpenShift cluster. And so after we log in into our OpenShift cluster into the right namespace that we want to serve this model from, um, what we do is we try to run another pod based on Selden. And that pod is going to go grab the model from the Ceph interface and run it in that namespace in OpenShift. And you can see when you do OC get Selden deployments, you see that we have the my model, which we did now. And we also have a model for, that's the fully trained model in the 200k rows, a uh, third of the 200k rows, and we also had it served from before. So what we're going to do, again, we'll do the same thing, testing the same thing of the served model. We'll send it fraud and not fraud first, and then we'll see what it um, gives us for predictions. And for our next part of the demo here coming up after this, we're going to show you how the simulation with the full test, with the full trained model is shown on the monitors 
on the Grafana dashboard. So we're sending it here fraud, and you see it's bringing, sending us back predictions of one, meaning it's fraud. So we're going to switch it back here to not fraud again, and then it should be giving us zeros. So again, as I said, we just had two data frames, and one was fraud, one was not fraud. So we're going to run it again with fraud, and you can see one. We'll run it again with not fraud, and it should give us um, zeros again. All right, so now we are going to hop over to the monitoring tools that we see in Grafana dashboards. So the first dashboard we're going to see is the model prediction dashboard that shows all the parameters we're getting from the Selden model. The first one is plotting probability of fraud, which is between 0 and 1 versus the amount. And you can see that we don't see much of a pattern there. Maybe um, we need more data to see the pattern, but for probability of fraud versus variable 17, we can see that every dip basically shows a fraud detection. Same for probability of fraud versus V10. You can also see the dips indicating um, fraud detection. So let's move on to the Selden core metrics. And these are the metrics that Selden by default provides. The success rate, which is between 0 and 1, uh, for 4xx HTTP, 400s and 500s HTTP responses, and the request per second. In the model. We can see here sometimes we have a spike, maybe because it's, it's when we're hitting it at a shorter uh, time frame. We can see the Kafka parameters too. We see um, the topics inbound message rate, how much messages are going through, and the Java memory utilization. So, and then uh, let's move on to the second dashboard, which is the normal cluster monitoring dashboard. And um, we can see here cluster memory usage, cluster CPU usage, file system usage. Those are just normal cluster parameters that you see in all OpenShift. And then we have the pod CPU usages lists the top pods with the most CPU usage, which is pretty interesting. Um, and then the pods memory usage also is shown here as Spark using most of the memory from a pods perspective. So those are all interesting parameters that a normal DevOps operator will be looking at to maintain the full functionality of an OpenShift cluster. And uh, that's it for our demo today. Thank you.